This is a situation at the beginning of turn number five. To win this game, we must cause an allied evacuation on or before the last turn, which is turn seven. And uh, for an evacuation to happen, we have to capture the ports and airfields on Crete. In the Cania sector, we have control of Malemi airfield and the port of Cania, and uh, there's fighting going on in Suda. But Suda seems like uh, it may fall in this next turn. Further to the west is the port of Kisamos with one allied unit, and our units at Malemi Airfield should, should be able to dispatch that unit quickly. To the south in Kania sector is the port of Sfakia, and this one is a little more tricky to capture. We have just one parachute battalion in the White Mountains, and uh, our units can move two spaces per turn unless we spend a Flieger Corps staff point, uh, in which case they could move one more space if they begin with a headquarters in their space. So there's no way that we will be able to arrive in force during this fifth turn to Sfakia. So this port is highly unlikely that we will be able to capture now. Now, our attention goes to the Retimo sector, where the port and the airfield are firmly in our hands. However, Heraklion port and airfield are in Allied hands, and uh, there's a substantial number of Allied units there. We have assigned the 2nd Regiment of the 7th Airborne Division to uh, drop at Heraklion and there's four units assigned, we have six transports, so we can assign two more. So most probably we will be also assigning battalions from the 3rd Regiment to the airdrop at Heraklion Airfield. There are six Allied units at Heraklion Airfield, so just dropping our paratroops there may not be enough. Fortunately, we can still muster a great number of Luftwaffe bomber units, including the Stukas. We have a total of six full-strength Stuka units. And uh, in this turn, we will be using the entirety of our Luftwaffe assets, performing tactical air attacks on Allied units in Crete. So we begin now with turn number five. So our strategy for turn number five is to take as many ports and airfields as we can. The port of Kisamos looks like an easy objective, so the forces at Malemi Airfield will have to uh, do that on their own. Suda should be uh, taken with the help of our paratroopers at Kania Port, and we should start moving our forces south through the White Mountains in order to uh, later, in a subsequent turn, attack the Allied port of Sfakia, also in Kania sector. And also during this turn, we should see an attack by our forces at Retimo Airfield against the uh, Allied unit, which is in rough terrain immediately to the east. And if we succeed in that attack, we can execute a pursuit option that would allow us to move our forces one more space and attack again. And in this case, it would be the Allied forces at the port of Heraklion. But there are four Allied units there. And finally, we will execute an airdrop at Heraklion airfield, but before we will obliterate the Allied defenses by mustering our uh, air forces. And we can muster a total of up to six of our air units against one particular zone. So it will most likely be our six Stuka units. And the purpose of all these attacks is for our forces to capture as many ports and airfields as possible so that in the next turn, turn number six, we will attack uh, the Allies strategically to lower their morale and hopefully cause an evacuation. 
So if the attacks during this turn go well, we have two decent chances at evacuation in turns 6 and 7. So we begin with the first phase, the Flieger Core 11 Staff Point phase, and we roll 1d6 to see how many Flieger Core points we have. We currently have one, which we saved from uh, previous die rolls. So here we go. And the roll is a four, which increases our Flieger Core staff points to five. And we move on to the German intelligence phase, where we can spend a staff point to uh, see what the Allies have in one of their zones. So having five Flieger Corps staff points available, we know we want to save some of those to use to uh, give us an advantage at the tactical edge determination. So, oh boy, do we want to use one of those points to see what the Allies have at Heraklion Airfield? And if we do, it's still not guaranteed that the intelligence uh, a check will be successful. We have to roll 1d6 and roll a 1 to 3. So what are the pros of uh, attempting to gain intelligence at Heraklion Airfield? Well, the reality is that we're going to airdrop uh, our airborne units there no matter what, because otherwise we're going to lose the game. However, if by any reason the Allies are very weak there, uh, we may not have to use all our Stuka forces there. Instead of uh, six, we may use five or four, and... Uh, use the other Stukas somewhere else. So, we'll spend a staff point. We have now four left. And now we roll 1d6 to see if the intelligence uh, effort is successful. We need one to three. And the roll is a three. So let's see what's at Heraklion Airfield. And there's three headquarter units and uh, each of them is an elite unit. Also, one uh, infantry unit with a strength of three, which is not shabby, a New Zealand cavalry uh, company, and one anti-aircraft unit. So uh, it will definitely be worth it to bomb Heraklion Airfield with those juicy targets there. Each of those headquarters is worth two victory points. And now we move to the German refit phase. We spend a Fleer Corps point to uh, bring units to full strength. We have uh, some units at reduced strength, for example, the uh, anti-tank unit at Malemi Airfield, and the headquarters for the 1st Regiment of the 7th uh, Airborne Division, which is at Retimo Airfield. Now, bringing these units to full strength, units which are ground units at Crete, would use up one of our transport units. So uh, we will not be refitting any ground units at Crete. A tougher question uh, comes when we uh, see our air units. We can refit some of our bomber units like this Heinkel 111, which now has a tactical uh, combat factor of two, but if we uh, refit it, it will be four. The Junkers, if refitted, will increase to four, and the Dornier, if refitted, will increase only to three. So uh, there's not a lot of return for one uh, Flieger core point at this stage, and we only have four Flieger core points left. So we will not spend any Flieger core points. Uh, basically, we will skip this refit phase. And now to the German staging phase. In the staging phase, we assign the units to the sectors, and in this particular case, we're going, we're going to uh, airdrop some units at Heraklion Sector. We have already the uh, second regiment of the 7th Airborne Division, so we are going to assign two more units, this time from the uh, 3rd Regiment, to be airdropped there too. So we will have a total of six units to be airdropped, and it's just six because we only have six transports left. So we assign one transport to each of the units. And now we commit our air units to missions, and uh, the maximum number of air units that can be committed to a specific zone is six. 
Anyway, we're going to commit the bulk of our air forces to attack in the Heraklion sector. And actually, all air units committed will go to the Heraklion sector, a total of nine full-strength units, of which eight are bombers. Now we proceed to the German tactical movement phase, where we move our ground units in Crete. And we start here in the Cania sector. We have five units here at Malemi Airfield, and all five move to Kisamos. And we note that Kisamos is a port, but it's also a town, so uh, the defenders will get a benefit there in the reduction of the strength of the attacking units. Now to the situation in Suda, these two units in Kania will move to Suda. And in addition, this uh, heavy weapons unit will also join in the fray, so we have a support unit there too. That's the end of the tactical movement in the Kania sector. At Retimo, we will hold with one unit here, Retimo Port. Meanwhile, our forces at Retimo Airfield will attack the sole allied unit, which is face down to, uh, in the rough zone immediately to the east. We will leave only one unit, which is the headquarters of the 1st Regiment at Retimo Airfield. And that concludes the tactical movement phase. Next phase is the strategic air attack phase, but we didn't assign any of our air units to conduct attacks on Allied morale or on the Royal Navy. So on to the German tactical air movement phase, and we move our air combat units to zones in assigned sectors. And then we move our transports. So we move the units assigned to Heraklion sector. So we place the air units for attack. And we have six air units attacking Heraklion airfield and three the port. Now we move the air transports to Heraklion sector. So now we place the transport units and all Transport units are scheduled to airdrop their units over Heraklion airfield. To the German amphibious movement phase, we do not have any amphibious uh, attacks scheduled, so we skip this phase. And now to the Allied reveal phase. The only Allied units that have to be revealed are those at the port of Heraklion. And we see strong units there, two uh, pretty strong New Zealander battalions, an anti-aircraft unit, and the headquarters of the New Zealander division. We reveal the unit to the uh, east of Retimo airfield. And this is a special forces or commando unit with a strength of two. And we also have to reveal the allied unit at Kisamos just an anti-aircraft unit. In this phase now the Allied anti-aircraft units fire at any German air units in the same zone. And uh, each anti-aircraft unit fires once at each one of the air units attacking there on a result that is equal to the anti-aircraft unit's uh, combat factor the air unit aborts the mission and returns to the uh, Luftwaffe available in Greece box. But if the roll is less, if it's a 1, it takes a hit. And uh, if it's higher than 2, then no effect. So we roll first for the anti-aircraft unit in Heraklion port. And anti-aircraft fire was a 2 against the Stuka, equal to the anti-aircraft unit's combat factor, so the Stuka aborts and heads back to Greece. Meanwhile, the Dornier, fire against the Dornier was ineffective, but the Messerschmitt 110 suffers a hit and is reduced. 
And that hit uh, reduces our victory points from 30 to 29. And now to the anti-aircraft fire against uh, our air units at Heraklion Airfield. And that includes also our air transports. We roll first for anti-aircraft fire against the German bombers attacking Heraklion Airfield. And we have hits against this Stuka as well as this other Stuka. And the remaining results are misses. And now we roll anti-aircraft fire against the six transports scheduled for Heraklion Airfield. And only one two rolled, and two is equal to the combat factor of the anti-aircraft unit, so the result is to abort one air unit. And since it is a transport unit, it returns to Greece, and the uh, airborne units that it is transporting do not airdrop. So of six, only one of the transports aborts. Now to the German tactical air attack phase. And we resolve the attacks by the Dornier and Messerschmitt 110 units attacking Heraklion port. And both units rolled a 4, so they missed. And they head back home. Now to the uh, tactical air attacks on Heraklion airfield. And of all tactical air attacks, only one hit. This is atrocious luck. This Stuka. And we choose this uh, British infantry unit with a strength of three. And the unit is eliminated. And the two hits by anti-aircraft fire reduce our victory point score to 27. And the elimination of the British infantry unit increases the score to 28. And the uh, air units, after such a lackluster performance, return to Greece. And now the transports are about to unload their precious cargo. Now to the airdrop and landing phase. And we land each of our airborne units. We have to roll 1d6 and consult the dreaded airborne drop table. But we can spend a Flieger core point to add a plus one to all airdrop die rolls for one zone, and uh, this may be a good idea. And our units are scheduled to land on an airfield, so on a one, they scatter and they just fall somewhere else. On a two, they're reduced, three or more, and they land. If we spend a Flieger core point, the worst that can happen is a two uh, reduction result. And uh, we would avoid this scattered result, which right now, uh, we want to avoid at all costs because we have to take that airfield as soon as possible and if the units scatter that means that they fall somewhere else. So we spend one Flieger core point and we have three left. So we roll for each of the transports. Only on a one will we suffer a reduction result. Any other result is a successful landing at Heraklion airfield. And of the five rolls, we had two ones, two reductions. So we reduce both uh, units that rolled one, and they all drop successfully at Heraklion Airfield. So we have five of our units at Heraklion Airfield fighting it out against five Allied units. Now to the German ground combat phase. And let's continue with the action at Heraklion Airfield. Let's spread the units out to see what each of the sides has. Here we see the units spread out five against five. We first start by determining the tactical edge. The Allies have a plus one because of high morale. Another plus one because this is a German airborne drop and another plus one because they have at least one elite unit attacking. The Germans, on the other hand, have a plus one because they have one elite unit, and uh, they would have no more die roll modifiers unless they spend one of their precious staff points, and they have three staff points left.
Given the importance of this attack and to give the Germans a slight but fair shot at the tactical edge, we'll spend a staff point. We have two left. So the Allies have an advantage in die roll modifiers 3 to 2, so we roll 1d6 for each of the sides to determine tactical edge. The Germans roll a 3 for a total of 5 and the Allies a 2 also for a total of 5, so it is tied. And in cases of ties for tactical edge, when the uh, space is an airfield, the attacker wins. So we win the tactical edge and we'll fire first. So we start with the support units. We don't have any support units, so the Allies fired their anti-aircraft unit. The roll is a three and it missed. And now we fire our five regular combat units. And continuing with the atrocious die roll luck here, only one unit hits, which is this, this uh, airborne battalion here with a roll of one. So only one allied unit is actually eliminated and we don't have even a tactical retreats for the others. And we will eliminate the anti-aircraft unit that has done so much harm. So it's eliminated and the battle rages on at Heraklion Airfield. Elimination of the anti-aircraft unit increases the score back to 29. Now the allied units fire back and they're all one so they have to roll a one in which case uh, it'll cause a tactical retreat on our airborne forces. And only one unit rolled a one, so there's a tactical retreat, and we have to choose a unit to retreat. And we choose this full strength airborne unit, and it can retreat one zone, it cannot retreat here because this is occupied by at least one allied unit, and the only other alternative is to retreat to this rough terrain space, which is empty. That's the end of the ground battle at Heraklion Airfield. And now to the battle in the rough terrain zone to the east of Retimo Airfield. We determined the tactical edge. The Allies have a plus one because morale is high. These units did not airdrop there, so uh, there's no uh, die roll modifier for the Allies as to that respect. And uh, the Allies have no elite units, so so the total die roll modifier for the Allies is only plus one. Now we have a plus one because we have an elite unit, and we have no other uh, die roll modifier. We have two Flieger Corps staff points left, but we're not going to use any of them here. So uh, we're going to roll now for both sides to see who has a tactical edge. Each side roll a two, so we're tied at three, and because this is a rough space zone, the defender, in cases of ties, has the tactical edge. So the allies will fire first, but we start with the support units. The allies have no support units. We have an artillery, a mountain artillery unit with a strength of three, so we fire that unit first. The roll is a six and it missed. Now the allied unit fires and it rolled a two which is equal to its combat factor causing a tactical retreat so we have to retreat one of our units. And we'll retreat the artillery support unit back to Retimo airfield. Now our units fire but this is a rough space zone and that reduces the combat strength of the attacking units, our units, by one to a minimum of one. So we roll for our units and the luck wasn't very good but at least we have one hit from the bottom uh, airborne unit that rolled a two so the defenders are eliminated. And we're in control of that rough terrain space. And with the elimination of the British unit we gain one victory point which increases our score now to 30. And because we won this battle now, that triggers a pursuit. We can choose to exercise a pursuit which uh, enables all our combat units to move to one adjacent zone. 
and uh, only combat units, not support units, but we don't have any support units in the space where we just won the battle. So we're going to move all four of our units from this rough terrain space into the adjacent Heraklion port space. And that will force the Allies to execute a counterattack during the upcoming Allied counterattack phase. So we have battles raging at Heraklion airfield and port. But we're still not done with the German ground combat phase. Now we focus our attention to the important port of Suda. And let's see what units we have there. We have four of our units, including one elite unit, and the Allies have two Greek units. And we start with the tactical edge determination. The Allies have a plus one for high morale. And we have a plus one because we have one elite unit. We still have two Flieger Corps staff points available. We could add one to increase the, our chances in the tactical edge attack, but We've seen that there will be two upcoming uh, Allied counterattacks, so we will save those points for later. So now we roll for uh, tactical edge determination, 1d6 for each side. And this time the Allies win 4 to 2. The Allies start by firing support units. They have no support units. We have one, so uh, we fire our heavy weapons unit that has a strength of four, but because we're attacking into a town space, its strength is reduced to three. So we roll 1d6. The roll is a five and that's a miss. Now the two Greek units fire. Two fives and both Greek units missed. And now we fire with our three parachute battalions, but they have a strength of three. Two twos and a four. The twos are hit, so the Greek units are eliminated. And our forces have captured the port of Suda. And now our forces can uh, exercise our per pursuit option to move to an adjacent zone. Now, in this game, uh, to control a zone, we have to have at least one unit there. The fact that we uh, uh, controlled a zone once and then uh, abandoned it uh, doesn't mean we still have control of the zone so we will have to avoid having allied units pop up here at Kanya we will move one of our units here to Kanya and it will be this uh, parachute battalion and similarly we will leave one unit in Suda which will be this parachute battalion and the uh, heavy weapons battalion and elite Parachute Battalion will move into Armenoi. And this will be uh, looking uh, later on to a further move to the south against Fakia. Now we go to the last battle of this uh, ground combat phase, the attack at Kisamos. And we have uh, five of our units. Now we roll for the tactical edge. The Allies have a plus one for high morale. We have a plus one because we have an elite unit and we will not spend a staff point here. So we uh, roll 1d6 for each side to determine uh, who has a tactical edge. Both sides rolled a one for a total of two. We're tied and the allies have the tactical edge because this is a town space. So the anti-aircraft unit, which is a support unit, fires now. The roll is a six and it missed. Now our support unit, the anti-tank unit, fires. It also rolled a six and it misses. Now we fire with our remaining four units, the mountain units and the uh, airborne elite unit. And uh, again, our forces uh, combat factors are reduced by one because this is a town space. So we roll for all four units. And uh, we only get one tactical retreat result with this unit that has a reduced strength of two because we're attacking into a town. So the anti-aircraft unit has to be retreated. So we take it and place it in the Allied reserve. 
space. And our forces have captured the port of Kisamos, but before we start celebrating, we're going to use our pursuit option to move one unit back here to Malemi Airfield so that we continue to control that space and avoid having Allied units uh, coming up and uh, popping up in that space. And we also will use the pursuit option to move units into this rough space here to the south of Kisamos. That concludes the German ground combat phase. So we eliminated two Greek units, but one of them is this partisan unit that uh, even when eliminated, it does not go into the eliminated Allied units box. It goes back to the Allied reserve and does not count for victory points, so we only get one victory point. And we're at 31, but we captured the port of Kisamos, so we add four more victory points. And now the score is 35. And finally, we also captured the port of Suda, so we add four more victory points. And now the score is 39. And one, now comes one of the most dreaded parts uh, in the game, which is the Allied Middle East Command phase, where the Allies roll on the Middle East Command event check table. And because their morale is high, they will roll three times. So for the first of three dice rolls, a 10 Allied Offensive at La Sithi, and uh, we follow the Allied Offensive procedure there, and luckily that's, not, that's the only sector where we are not attacking. Uh, because of the offensive procedure, any Allied units adjacent to a port or an airfield in the sector move towards or into that port or airfield. So uh, this... Uh, face-down unit moves into the port of Sitia, as well as this unit in this uh, rough space zone. There are no other uh, ports or airfields in La Siti, and that concludes that offensive procedure there. Now to the second dice roll. And the roll is a three morale check. If the current victory point level is positive, and it is, we uh, we roll a die and gain that number of Flieger Corps staff points. So, we roll 1d6, and the roll is a 2. Well, it's better than nothing. Which increases our staff points now to 4. And now to the third and last dice roll on the Middle East Command events table. And this is the result that I dread always. The reserves released result. We roll a die and pick that number of units from the Allied Reserve. And for each released unit, we check in the random locations tables to see in which zone each unit is placed. And fortunately, a one was rolled. Only one allied unit is picked from the reserve. So we pick an allied unit from the reserve and uh, leave it face down, of course. And now we will roll to see where that allied unit appears. And we roll... 2d6. The roll is a 4 at Kanya, but Kanya is under our control, so that uh, unit does not come into play and is returned to the Allied Reserves box. So actually this phase turned out pretty well for us, so let's go to the next phase now, the Allied Counterattack phase, and we have two battles. And we have a battle at Heraklion Port and Heraklion Airfield. And we will start with the battle at the port. Both sides have four units. The Allies have a plus two tactical edge. Tyrol modifier. We have a plus one because of the elite status of the headquarters. And we uh, must spend a Flieger Corps staff point if we want an additional plus one, and we will do so. So now we have three staff points left. So we roll 1d6 for each of the sides, and we have a total of eight and the ally six, so we win the tactical edge. So we fire first, we start with support units. We don't have support units. The allies do, so they fire their anti-aircraft unit. The roll is a three and it misses. 
now we fire our units, we are not attacking, the Allies are counterattacking, so our strengths are the ones printed on the counter. So we roll 1d6 for each of our units, and uh, oh boy, only one unit scores a hit with a die roll of one. So we eliminate one allied unit, and it's the New Zealander unit with a strength of four. Now the two surviving maneuver units of the Allies fire back. And they both miss. Uh, remember, the Allies are attacking, so they have a reduction of one in their uh, combat factor. So the battle rages on at Heraklion port. And now we move to Heraklion airfield. And as we can see here, the Allies have a bunch of headquarters and a weak New Zealander uh, infantry unit. So we roll for tactical edge. Let's determine the die roll modifiers first. The Allies get a plus three, that is because they have an elite unit, morale is high, and this was a German airborne drop in that zone. We get a plus one because we have an elite unit and we are going to use another staff point, reducing our number of staff points to two. So the Allies have the advantage, a plus three to a plus two. We roll one d6 for each side. And we rolled a five. We have a total of seven. The Allies rolled a three for a total of six. So we win the tactical edge. We roll for our maneuver units. There are no support units. And uh, the strength of our units is the one printed because it's the Allies who are counterattacking. So we roll 1d6 for each of the units. Two twos and two fives. That's two hits. And we'll eliminate uh, these two headquarters. Now the surviving Allied units fire, and both units miss. Well, the battle still rages also at Heraklion airfield. And in these Allied counterattacks, the Allies lost two headquarters, each is worth two victory points, and one infantry battalion worth one victory point, for a total of five. And the victory point score increases now from 39, to 44. Now to the Allied command adjustment phase. An Allied morale is at its highest level still, so there's no adjustment to make. Allied evacuation phase, because Allied morale is at level 12, it is impossible to roll higher than that with two dice, so we skip this phase. And uh, there is no evacuation, so we also skip this phase. And we reach the end of the turn phase, and that's the end of turn five. Here's the situation at the end of turn five in the easternmost sector, La Siti, the Allies control the port of Sitia. We haven't allocated any uh, of our airborne troops to land there. We have here in Heraklion, and uh, the port and the airfield there are disputed by both sides, and as long as they are disputed and not in our control, uh, each one of these objectives increases Allied morale at the end of the turn, making an evacuation more unlikely. So we have to capture those two objectives in the next turn if we want to have any chance of winning this game. In the next sector, Retimo, we have control of the airfield and the port. There's a strong Allied unit to the west of the port, but uh, just one allied unit won't be enough to probably uh, scare us away from there. So those two objectives are in firm grasp. Now, further to the west in Kania, we have control of the port of Suda as well as the port of Kania and Malemi airfield. To the south is the port of Sfakia, which is now guarded by four units, and uh, we will need to send considerable forces south to have a chance of capturing that port. And as you see, there is not a lot of our forces nearby which can move two spaces and reach Sfakia in one turn. So we may have to spend some Flieger Corps points uh, to get more units there. And finally, in the uh, westernmost uh, sect, uh, part of the sector, we have already captured the port of Kisamos. 
The good news is we have two Flieger Corps staff points available which carry over to the next turn. So uh, those can be used to refit units to give us a better chance in combat with the tactical edge and uh, other purposes. So those will definitely come in handy. But the uh, most worrying aspect is that Allied morale is still high. So that means that in the next turn, we will have to use all our air resources for strategic attacks on Allied morale with the purpose of lowering that morale to see if we have a decent chance of uh, causing an evacuation by the Allies failing the uh, evacuation die roll, which is rolling higher than the current morale level. Now, the problem we have is that more than half of our air units are already reduced. And the only way to bring them back to full strength is spending Flieger Corps staff points. And each one of those points spent refitting air units is one point that we don't have to influence combat by a, a positive die roll modifier to obtain the tactical edge. So what must we achieve in the next turn to have a chance of winning? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We have to capture Heraklion Port and Heraklion Airfield. In addition, we have to push units south to Sfakia to see if we can capture that port in the last turn of the game in case an evacuation is not declared in turn six. That means that if all these objectives are reached, the only port or airfield that will be left to the Allies will be the easternmost port of Scythia. And uh, that would provide only a plus one increase in Allied morale. And remember, to cause an evacuation, we have to roll higher than Allied morale. Now, that is a best case scenario. Worst case scenario is that we do not capture Sfakia in the next turn and the Allies will have uh, two added to their morale. So, what will it be? Stay tuned and uh, really, I uh, do not feel in any mood of having to go to Berlin to explain what is happening right now. So, turn six is critical. Stay tuned. This is Tuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.